Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to bringing dynamic service chaining to the telco cloud with Nuage and CloudBand. Uh, I'm Scott Drennan, I product manager at Nuage, and my cohort, uh, Ajay Kapar, is uh, a CloudBand architect. And uh, what we're going to be talking about is uh, some of the components involved in uh, an NFB solution, uh, how OpenStack is relevant to that, uh, and how OpenStack uh, can be extended with uh, additional capabilities uh, to provide uh, uh, a more complete solution, as well as uh, what some of the work items are around that. So. Starting from the uh, always uh, always exciting Etsy reference architecture, uh, you've got uh, OSS BSS and NFB orchestrator at the top uh, with various components. You've got uh, a VNF manager uh, with VNFs talking over uh, NFBI uh, with a virtualized infrastructure manager. So. Your network functions are going to include uh, a bunch of traditional telco uh, network functions like IMS, MME, uh, S&P Gateway, but also uh, more traditional IT functions such as uh, firewalls, IMS, uh, or IMS, uh, I IPS, IDS, uh, and, uh, and things like that. You also have a network network management function, which I didn't mention, uh, and then the the VNF manager that's providing uh, lifecycle management uh, elasticity, uh, and then at the top you've got the uh, orchestration layer that provides the uh, service management and some of the the uh, uh, SDN SDN management components. So. Where's OpenStack in all of this? OpenStack sits uh, down at the bottom uh, doing all of the hard work and all the heavy lifting and uh, makes, uh, makes the whole thing work. Without, uh, without OpenStack, we, we really wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be anywhere. Uh, and admittedly, there are other options for deploying NF NFV architectures, but uh, from what we're seeing, OpenStack is really becoming the standard uh, infrastructure for NFBI, and uh, that's a good thing because it uh, it provides uh, a level of commonality and uh, uh, stability that you can build interesting things on top of. So you've got a bunch of best of breed capabilities that come with OpenStack, uh, things like multi hypervisor orchestration, and including things that are not hypervisors such as uh, uh, ironic. Uh, you've got uh, multi-region single sign-on when you're extending uh, your system across multiple data centers and uh, multiple geographies. Uh, uh, IPAM and pluggable IPAM integration, back-end storage, VM templating. Uh, all of these things uh, are, are very important from uh, an infrastructure perspective. But there's a bunch of stuff that OpenStack doesn't do and say uh, probably won't do and in, in, in my opinion at least shouldn't do because uh, OpenStack uh, is already trying to do many, many things and uh, while it's fun to contemplate taking over the world, uh, it's uh, I, the more things you do, the harder it is to do things well. So uh, there are some additional components outside of OpenStack uh, that say, uh, some of which uh, we're providing as part, as part of the, the Nokia solution, and uh, those are some of the things we're going to talk about today. So NFV orchestration is uh, a, a key component. Uh, robust high-performance networking. Uh, OpenStack networking is continuing to improve. Uh, it's improved release over release uh, for as long as I've been involved. But in terms of the requirements for NFV, uh, it's not there yet, and the the bar is uh, is ever rising as far as what uh, uh, 
what the networking requirements are. So we'll, we'll see how that turns out. It's also kind of important to be able to connect out of uh, your NFB cloud. If you're doing network function virtualization with, uh, with uh, nothing to talk to, it's, it's not really very interesting. Uh, and then uh, also a, a portal or a marketplace to expose these, uh, uh, these functions out to the broader internal or external customer community. So what does this look like from, uh, from a workflow perspective? You've got customers. Uh, those may be internal customers. Those may be external customers. You may be doing um, resale. Uh, but uh, they're making a request for a VNF service uh, of some sort or other. And the marketplace and VNF catalog really ends up being, uh, being custom per, uh, per deployment. It's not something that you can really genericize uh, the same way as you can to a, a large extent with some of the other components. Uh, and then the marketplace needs to provide uh, a call into the NFB orchestrator uh, requesting whatever uh, the uh, service is that has been, has been requested. So NFBO needs to provide a simple abstracted uh, templated model uh, to make it easy to deploy a, a, a marketplace and uh, to simplify what the marketplace looks like. From there, uh, NFBO is uh, uh, calling into various components. In our case, uh, it's uh, calling into OpenStack and calling into Nuage. Uh, and the reason that we're not doing all of this through OpenStack is uh, to provide some more uh, expansive uh, networking capabilities. Uh, and there's work in OpenStack to expose uh, APIs, and there are extensions, uh, but it, it's still, at least in the, in the near term, easier to make those calls, uh, calls directly. So from, a, uh, from the marketplace, you've also got cases where uh, you've got uh, complex VNFs uh, where you've got uh, potentially a separate uh, VNF manager. Those would be uh, cases like uh, a mobile gateway or an IMS. And in that case, they may need each their individual uh, dedicated VNF managers, or that may end up being a plug-in from the NFBO. That, that uh, depends on the use case. And either way, you end up launching a, launching VNFs and configuring them. Uh, that results in OpenStack deploying uh, a VM, many VMs, uh, a network, many networks, uh, lots, of, uh, lots of complex configuration. And uh, one of the key use cases for NFB is you want to be able to take uh, all of your VNFs uh, deploy them in a relatively generic fashion and say uh, hook them together in in various different uh, different flows and Ajay is going to talk more about that uh, a little bit later on but say uh, that allows for uh, simpler templates on the VNF side and uh, more composability as far as the as far as the configuration goes and then obviously you do need to be able to connect that out into the uh, uh, broader network and uh, one of the things that uh, is, is critical from uh, uh, a configuration perspective is you, you want to make that uh, as programmable as everything else because you've got lots of different uh, uh, VRFs uh, out in your broader network. You've got uh, the internet, and you want to be able to uh, hook those those pieces together in a, in a logical fashion. And then you want to be able to scale out to uh, multiple uh, multiple VNFs in, in that service chain. So, what do you need from uh, an SDN for service chaining? Uh, like I said previously, you need robust networking. Uh, you need to be able to scale to uh, potentially very large numbers of VNFs. 
Uh, today, those numbers are in the hundreds, thousands. Uh, but the modeling that uh, the architects who are building this stuff uh, are doing are showing that you're, you're looking at uh, tens of thousands, uh, especially as you move to VNFs with more microservice style architectures, you end up uh, breaking that uh, out into smaller and smaller uh, components, and there are more and more of them. You obviously need high performance and throughput, and you need uh, small packet size capabilities. And to do that, um, the tools we have today are uh, uh, networking uh, based on either DPDK or uh, SRIOV, and that depends on the VNF, and you do want to be able to uh, cover off both of those. Now, from a chaining perspective, there are a bunch of different ways to uh, attach things together. Uh, you can uh, deploy your VNFs uh, or your VNF components and uh, do hop by hop inspection as each packet goes in and out of the VNF. I uh, look at the packet header, I uh, do the inspection uh, and tell it where to go uh, uh, the next time. And generally you would aggregate that up into flows uh, so that you're not doing the the, uh, uh, as, as much of a lookup each time. You can also uh, approach this from a routing perspective uh, and deploy uh, each, each VNF in a separate VRF uh, and connect them together with, uh, with routing. Uh, that means you're deploying an awful lot of VRFs in your data center, but it means that uh, uh, as long as you don't need uh, packets with the same destination to go through different service chains, that can be a simpler, uh, simpler topology. And the holy grail of all of this uh, is service function chaining using NSH. And uh, I'm not going to get into what NSH is or, uh, uh, or how it works. It's a way of putting um, an additional header on your packet that is used by, uh, by the SDN to uh, steer traffic without having to do uh, all of the lookups each time. And there are many, many uh, drafts in IETF talking about all sorts of different things you can do with NSH. Uh, I think in the near term, what you're going to see is uh, a bunch of things using steering. Uh, Proxy information going to uh, going to VNFs is is going to take more time to standardize, but uh, that's that's my take. But the, from a functionality perspective, you need to be able to uh, take all of this, abstract it away, make it easy, and uh, provide the support that uh, that VNFs need. So now handing it over to Ajay, he's going to talk in more detail about. Uh, NFVO for service chaining and how that uh, ties into configuring uh, service chains in the, uh, in the SDN layer. Thanks, Scott. You can you hear me, probably? Hi. Uh, I'm Ajay Koper. I'm the Cloud Band Architect that Scott introduced me. So um, now, uh, with, with the basics of uh, SDN behind uh, what Scott has said, NFU is basically, we are using NFU for uh, uh, provisioning networks and also uh, to basically to do the service chaining as one of the use cases. Um, simplify provisioning uh, using service chain templates and the VNF scaling. Uh, in, in, in the process, uh, NFU, which is Network Function Virtualization Orchestrator, uh, we have a product in Nokia which is called as Cloud Band Network Director. And uh, that basically uses a lot of uh, OpenStack components like uh, Mistral, Murano, and Heat. And uh, with the combination of these components um, uh, and, and NUARCH, we are able to, say, uh, do a service orchestration and also do the um, SDN configuration via, uh, via NUARCH. So the next uh, few slides, I'll take you over to the modeling. How do you model network services in Cloud Network Director? 
and then a little animation on how basically we will um, and realize an SDN um, use case uh, using Nuage. Okay. So, uh, network service um, uh, descriptor is basically the language which the cloud network director, um, see, the cloud network director understands. Um, so, it's it, it's a collection of uh, virtual network functions which are interlinked together to form a, a, a graph. And um, in the HC world, this needs to be uh, modeled. And and in CBND, which is cloud network director, uh, we have um, uh, gone in for Tosca as the modeling language. Uh, Tosca is basically um, a domain specific language which is chosen for uh, uh, for NSD and uh, it has it, it's a series of say uh, it has a hierarchical look on services and templates and relationships so uh, network service descriptor is modeled as a service template and um, this service template is comprised of uh, different node templates and uh, relationship templates so every virtual network function of VNF is modeled as a, a, a node template and between the VNFs, there are relationships that are established, and those are uh, primarily modeled as relationship templates. In Tosca, you can have node types, uh, define custom node types, and uh, so that uh, custom, custom uh, attributes and properties can be uh, extended from a base node type. So there are uh, node types which, uh, which are done for, uh, for VNFs, which you want to uh, have proprietary extensions to that. And uh, Tosca is primarily, um, uh, say, decoupled from the underlying VNFM and NFEI. It's a modeling language which is decoupled from uh, the NFEI and VNFM. And um, you can attach policy and process and do advanced LCM operations. Uh, from, if, if Tosca is used, basically, you can generate an entity graph out of a Tosca model and e execute the entity graph, which will, which will basically uh, provide the LCM of the entire network service. LCM basically is lifecycle management. And it's open, driven by the community. So in Nokia, uh, it, we have contributed back to the Tosca community as well. So Tosca is basically one of the DSLs which is uh, used in, um, in Cloud Network Director. Um, yeah, so we document Tosca in uh, YAML format, so it's uh, uh, easy to read, human readable format, uh, which is which is used to document um, uh, Tosca, and uh, we have used Tos simple pr uh, profile for NFV for Tosca and extended it uh, to define our own, own node templates and relation templates, and uh, the virtual links, and some of the uh, HCR um, constructs like the virtual links, connection points. VNF forwarding graphs and uh, network function forwarding paths are modeled in Tosca as node templates. Okay, this is one. This is one uh, one picture which which basically shows um, we have the physical network functions on the right and on the right and the left side of the picture, uh, which are uh, basically having uh, say three vir virtual network functions VNF A, B, and C, and uh, the the little boxes, circles, blue circles over there, uh, which, which are basically the connection points, uh, which represent uh, inter uh, interfaces of the virtual network function. And uh, between, uh, between the VNFs and the connection points, the, the, the brown link which goes there, which is called the virtual link. So these are terminology, terminology which are used in HC. Virtual link is basically a logical connection between one or more VNFs. And they represent basically a VLAN or a VXLAN when it's realized, uh, when we instantiate a network service and realize it. Connection point is an interface on a VNF PNF which connects uh, to the virtual link. And uh, it can be realized as a, a V port, VNIC, or a physical port. Um, and the VNF forwarding graph defines the traffic flows between the, between the VNFs in a network service. So the dotted lines which are there, it basically form a network function path and it, it's part of a VNF uh, forwarding graph and yeah. Now I, I will take you to a, through a small animation on the uh, use case. Um, so here we have different uh, elements of Etsy. The NFVO which is cloud based network director, um, the SDN manager uh, which is Nuage, the VNFM uh, and then so basically, uh, when you want to deploy a network service, when an operator starts deploying a network service, um, 
the network service is evaluated, the data center is identified on which the network service has to be deployed, an open check data center basically, and the tenants for the VNF. The VNF placement, uh, where, to, where to place the VNF based on the VNF characteristics is identified, and um, the external connection points for VNF and NSD are evaluated whether they, they fit uh, to be deployed in a particular data center. This is done by the NFVO. Um, sorry. Okay. Then uh, invoke the SDN manager. So um, once the once the initial validations are done, the external virtual links, which I showed in the previous slide, the the links between the two VNFs needs to be realized, and those external virtual links are basically realized using the uh, the SDN manager. In this case, Nuage. So uh, NFVO makes a Nuage call and uh, creates these virtual links. Then the SDN manager, based on the data center network topology information, uh, decides to create, reuse a, a tenant or edge router using data center SDN control interface. So um, uh, it can be done by Neutron, and it can also be done by Nuage. So for service chaining use case, we do it by uh, by, uh, by Nuage, and for normal uh, network creation, it is done by Neutron. Then connect tenant edge router to the data center. So the edge router is connected to the um, data center um, edge router as needed. Um, then create virtual links, ELAN, and connect to a tenant edge router. So the virtual links are created, and these are connected to the, the edge gateway or the edge router over here. Once the external virtual links are um, uh, are, are created, then the then the network um, NFV orchestrator is notified so that it can update its own uh, internal database about this uh, about the external connection external links and uh, this is what I'm saying so uh, once the external links are um, virtual links uh, are in place then the the deployment of the VNF starts so um, NFV orchestrator will call the relevant VNF managers to uh, and passes uh, uh, to pass the VNF details to be instantiated along with the external uh, virtual links, so that the VNF manager can use these virtual links to establish connectivity between um, the VNFs. And then now we move on to the VNF manager, which evaluates the VNF descriptor. V VNF descriptor is li like a network descriptor, uh, a metadata for a VNF. Uh, it identifies the VM, VM needs, the internal connection points, and the internal uh, networks. So it identifies this, uh, the needs and then uh, invokes the uh, Vim API. So in case, in this case, OpenStack APIs are invoked to say create a server and then create the the virtual links among uh, virtual links between the net, uh, VNFs. Then uh, the a VNF is basically a collection of uh, uh, VMs um, and you need internal connections between the VM. This, the, the, uh, to create internal links between the virtual machines, it's the responsibility of the VNF manager, and VNF manager does it. Uh, creates virtual links between the uh, the, the VMs basically, and um, and then uh, create external connection points and connect external uh, connection points to external virtual link. So once the internal links are created, uh, the the external connection points of VNF are are, are um, connected using the external virtual link, which is passed from the orchestrator towards the VNF manager. Okay, and um, notify uh, network uh, NFU about the deployed VNF. So the last step, so so that the bookkeeping can be done on the uh, on the orchestrator side. Yeah, then the orchestrator basically updates its internal uh, internal database about the virtual links in the state of the network service, and also can uh, notify the umbrella applications on top of it. So the so here I uh, here I have shown an example of OpenStack data center which is used to simulate the entire network service. Okay. Okay. So with that. Um, uh, I will uh, take you through a very small uh, animation on how how we are using Novage now and Neutron together to uh, to achieve the service chain. Mm. So we have um, Cloud Network Director, which 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 receives um, um, what do you say um, a network service descriptor as a Tosca model, and uh, the virtual links, connection points, the virtual VNF of G are all uh, uh, modeled in Tosca. Um, 
then we have an open st uh, in, in the open stack as an ml2 plugin uh, neutron v, uh, vsd is uh, plugged in uh, and uh, uh, as scott told uh, for some advanced use case like service chaining we we basically create uh, the the networks uh, and the subnets in the uh, in noad using the the vs the vsp apis um, and uh, once the uh, once basically the uh, the network and the subnets are created in the in new arch then they are mapped to the neutron network so um, they are mapped and we use the the rest apis provided by uh, neutron and also the uh, also new arch to basically um, map the subnets to the to the new arch subnets and uh, after all is this is done this, the basic plumbing work of uh, interconnecting the vnfs is uh, is over that means if there are in network service if there are multiple uh, vnfs the the interconnection between the vnfs has been done now the next step is to uh, do a service chaining on uh, on them and um, in order to do service chaining uh, in noach there is there are needs to create forward and reduction policies um, uh, per VNF, uh, per connection point in virtual link, these forward, forward, forward uh, uh, and reduction policies are created using the again the NUAJ uh, VSD APIs. And uh, once they are done, then the basically the the service uh, service chain between the VNFs that is uh, will be will basically be established. So this is a, a small animation of how we try to um, achieve service chaining using NUAJ and Neutron and uh, How do you bring it to the? I decided to. Uh, yeah, that's my fault. Okay. Let's do that. Roll. Sorry for this. So. Okay. So that was um, one one brief uh, animation on how we y use uh, Neutron in the in the Nuage extensions. Um, then the last slide basically is on, and this is the service chain uh, what we achieve. So ultimately, there are a uh, chain of VNFs, and uh, the the arrows show the how the packet flows, uh, uh, and whenever um, whenever a packet is de destined for a um, for for end destination, then the NUAJ intercepts the package, uh, applies forwarding policy on that, and and then uh, routes it via the uh, via the different VNFs. So conclusion, OpenStack is uh, enhanced by NFU and SDN solutions. So we use OpenStack uh, for our uh, as NFUI layer um, and use basically Noage as an, as an uh, ML2 plugin for OpenStack to achieve our SDN solutions. Uh, Cloud CBND, which is Cloud Bindu Director, is a NFU orchestrator which orchestrates network service. It basically um, deploys VNFs using the underlying VNF manager. It uses SD, uh, SDN from Noage. And also Neutron to uh, uh, realize the um, external and internal uh, internal networking and establish the end-to-end connectivity. And uh, Nuage VSP provides uh, NSDN for NFE, and it's and it's it, it's it's already proven in the market. So that's any questions uh, on, on this? Yeah. And thank you for modeling good behavior and coming to coming to the mic. Nokia presenting different solutions in different places. I saw Nokia presenting they will go with Tacker one place. Nokia presenting saying that they will follow open source manner where the core is Juju. Now we have this Cloud Band director reminding Red Hat director. So which one is it really going to be realistic? Thank you. So a uh, good question from Ericsson. Thank you. Uh, um, and uh, my, my answer to that is uh, just as with anywhere else in uh, uh, the NFB space, there are lots of different people doing lots of different things. Uh, and uh, I, I, would, I would hesitate to predict the future. So uh, I, and uh, if, I think if you look at any vendor in the NFB space, 
there is uh, there is no one uh, consistent answer. There are there are many answers for many different use cases, and uh, until they, uh, uh, I, d I don't think we're going to see convergence uh, in NFB uh, anytime anytime soon. There's going to be lots of different things happening. In, in the call flow, what, at what point do you actually provision the VNFs themselves, or is that out of scope of, of the of the um, process yeah. here? In in the call flow, when uh, when we basically create uh, the external virtual links uh, using the SDN controller, is, is when we start deploying the uh, the VNFs and calling the right relevant uh, VNF managers because. Uh, the, VNF, the VNFs will need external connection, uh, uh, external virtual links to establish end-to-end -end connectivity. So after the, the, the external virtual links are provisioned into the system, and then is when the deployment of the VNF starts. Yes, so um, NFU orchestrator is basically, uh, Cloud Network Director is basically talk, can talk to multiple VNF managers from different uh, vendors. It's multi vendor, multi -vendor. and the HC specifies uh, an interface between the uh, orchestrator and the VNF manager, which is called the OR VNFM interface. And there are a set of APIs on which you can deploy a VNF, terminate, heal, or do whatever. So that those, that's what uh, we basically rely on in order to deploy a VNF. And uh, Nokia supplies some of those, and we partner with with people to supply others. But uh, again, the, uh, the the ecosystem is is quite diverse at this point. Um, it's also a question about your workflow. Um, my understanding is you use a template to define the uh, interface and the connections in between them. Um, so my question is about the templates itself. Um, do you provide a tool to actually generate the templates, or it's actually a manual process? So we 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 follow Tosca now to to model the templates. Uh, there is, we are in the process of say building a, a Tosca editor, wherein you can basically build this uh, build this network service descriptors using the Tosca editor as a drag and drop, and which can generate a Tosca template uh, uh, as as an output. So right now it's a... Right now it is uh, handwritten. How do you handle the failover and uh, monitoring of the VNF and the service chains? So, for two things. Uh, well, there, there, there's two pieces of this. One is at the SDN layer. Uh, monitoring uh, that VNFs are alive and uh, uh, that, uh, and then taking action at the at the network layer. But then there's also uh, cases where it may look alive from a network perspective uh, and not be. So that uh, becomes the responsibility of the uh, VNF manager. Any other questions? platform uh, aware, let's say um, I want to put a uh, network service on a DBTK enabled node. Um, is your platform has the capability to talk to the nodes to find out which, uh, basically, uh, do, do, do you have the intelligence to, uh, to do the placement? So that becomes a, a question more for, more for Nova. I, I, and I, it's a it's a question of uh, uh, availability zones in Nova uh, yeah. to to group things. So that's that's a place where OpenStack actually gives you uh, give, gives you the tools to to construct your your compute resources and and group them separately. Yeah, and uh, just to add, uh, from the orchestrator, we have um, we have a policy driven uh, approach to place the VNFs. So you can basically define policies. And in that policies, you can have uh, different uh, rules defined uh, based on a VNF characteristics like CPU pinning, whatever. Uh, and based on that, the, the VNF placement distance are taken. 
And where is this policy sitting? It's policy sitting in the inside the in the orchestrator. Okay. Okay. So it's in, it's inside the orchestrator. Then you and it makes. It to Nova. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you.